on today's program. Because, like I said, just because you're struggling don't mean that you're failing. Yeah. The only way that you can fail, the only way that you can fail is if you decide to stop trying. Yeah, it's not worth it. You're about to embark on a few minutes of raw testimony with a candid, unscripted program that goes beyond the pulpit and straight off the church bus. Open conversations that share the true view of Christ to help us through today and into a victorious tomorrow. This is Coffee Bar Confessions. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode and today we're going to talk about dedication. Yeah, but first I think we need an figure out what dedication means. So the definition of dedication, the quality of being dedicated or committed to a task or purpose. So with that, de that definition given to us, that means that each one of us has a task or a purpose given to us. Yeah. So when you're looking at this, uh, let's talk about something that ever man has to deal with. When you turn 18 years old, the first thing that you have to do is you have to sign up for the military. Now, not everybody has that mentality of, hey, I want to join the military. I want to go out and be a part of wars and, and things that military people have to deal with. But as a soldier, the first thing that you do is, is you go to a boot camp. Yeah. And the purpose of a boot camp is to do one thing, and that's to question everybody's dedication every single person that shows up to boot camp they get their dedication questioned from day one they you have people screaming in your face mm -hmm. from day one you're face first in mud pits you're climbing ropes you're climbing ladders you're jumping boxes you're you're um mm -hmm. putting your flesh and your you know you're putting your person yeah in a point of, I mean, seriously, you're, you're questioning every bit of your dedication. Yes. Do I really want to do this? Exactly. Yeah. It's to a point of, um, you know, they, there's a point where you have all these people that show up, and a lot of people don't make it. They don't make it all the way through. They don't have the dedication. And at the, at the end of this boot camp, everybody, everybody gets up, they... Um, graduate from boot camp and they turn into what we know as the United States Army or the the United States military the Marine Corps uh, the Marine Corps the the Navy what, whatever whatever branch they're going to they realize hey at this point my dedication I'm I am now dedicated to my purpose um, and with that being said all of us have some point questioned our own dedication you know uh, those of us that are married every every day, it's a walk, it's a hard question on our dedication. You know, yeah. when when spouses argue or when spouses have things that that go don't go their way or uh, just different situations, we find ourselves questioning our dedication. Did I really want this marriage? You know, when you have kids, did I really want this child? When when uh, that parent or that mother is up at all hours of the night with a screaming baby. Yeah. You know, I promise you their dedication is questioned when it's time to sleep and that baby's not sleeping. Um, it's, I've, got, I've had four of them and I know I've, I've woke up before because my, a lot of times my wife didn't wake me up. I had good dedication. Some people struggle with the feeling of, uh, I can't really provide for this kid. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a struggle, even though they're signed up for government assistance, they still struggle to make ends meet. Yeah, and some people go beyond what you consider legal to make ends meet. Exactly, and they they, they really in the long that what it, what that saying is is they figure out it's time to do what it takes. Yeah, it's time to make sure that uh, because a parent will, you know, they will get to that point that my child needs food. My child needs clothes, yeah. you know. Um, it's cold outside and my, my child ain't got a jacket. 
it's cold outside and my, my kids ain't got shoes. It's a dedication that you have to say. Uh, there's many times parents will actually, you know, not have food in, in their cabinets uh, and take their last, I don't know, five, ten dollars that they have, you know, uh, because nowadays you're not going to get a whole lot at the grocery store for five or ten dollars. No. And so sometimes they will take their last five or ten dollars that they have and they will stop by McDonald's or stop by Burger King or something like, like that and just give their kids food because it's a dedication. When you have that child, you become dedicated to that child. You, become, you give that child everything that they need. Once you become gradu a graduate of boot camp and you dedicate yourself to that, you then become part of a platoon. And when you become part of that platoon, um, these group of men that you're with, that's going to be the group of men that you show up to in war. You know, you're gonna your platoon is gonna be is gonna be dispatched out to war to to a certain area, and you're all gonna have your guns, you're all gonna have your your backpacks and all the things that you're carrying with you, and you got to know that that group beside you is just as dedicated as you yeah. are. You got that support system. Yeah, and when you show up, you know, uh, when you show up to the to the battlefield, and I've got my back against yours. I gotta know there ain't nobody getting to my back. You know, that's the, that's the when the whole I got your back is taken to a whole nother level is because I have dedicated myself to make sure that not only am I protected, yeah. but you're protected as well. And so that's a true dedication to say, I, I not only am I protecting me, but I'm pre protecting those around me. And so a, a, a private or a soldier in his platoon will do everything that he can to make sure that those around him are are safe those around him are are to, are safe to the point that we all have a job and that is to to do this and to make it home to our family yeah. you know uh same thing with our with our police department you know our police department they show up every day they put their uniforms on. They they go out in their police cruisers and they and they go out and they do their job. You know, those of us that have never been in a police crew, that, you know, a police officer's position. Those of us that's never never had to deal with that. We don't know what it's like to get up one morning and drive to work, get in your police <coughs> cruiser, and take off driving, and your family be at home in fear that they may not ever come home. Yeah. You know, they, you might be brung home in a casket. Soldiers might be bring home, uh, you know, ha had to be have to be flown back to the United States because they didn't make it. You know, it's a it's a dedication that it doesn't matter what happens. I'm dedicated to this point. I think you've actually got a a, a thought there. Uh, when, when you read it to me earlier about it doesn't matter what happens if we fail yeah. if we if we uh but we got to keep trying yeah that's one thing we all have in common is we make mistakes and we're gonna fail but uh the first thing is the first time you fail that's when you have a decision to make do we give up or do we keep going do yeah. we keep trying to succeed yeah. so no matter how much we fail getting back up and keep trying regardless of our failures or mistakes that's that's our dedication that's what's going to keep us pushing if we're dedicated we're going to get up we're going to keep going we're yeah. going to keep pushing because we see that purpose we yeah yeah or see, that, that worth as a <coughs> as a father as a father you get up every day or as, as a husband yeah you get up every day and you go to work yeah. and you are dedicated to a job yeah, dedicated well, to your family. Yeah. yeah, and that and that's exactly where I was going. Not only you're you're dedicated to a job, but you're dedicated to that because you have a family to yeah. provide for. Um, and when you show lack of dedication to that job, when you show lack of dedication, that is that really an insult to that family that you're leaving every day. Yeah, the family that believes in you, the family that loves you, the family that that knows you know. Where's that check coming on Friday, or where, or where's that meal, the next meal coming? I don't, I don't have to worry about it because Daddy's got it. 
You know, I don't that wife sitting at home. I don't have to worry about it because my husband's taking care of me. Yeah. You know, but then there's husbands out here. There's fathers out here that, you know, they'll take off work at the drop of a hat. Yeah. You know, uh, they they get in trouble. They 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 lose their jobs. Why? Because they wasn't showing up to work. And so not only does that now look bad on that man. At, at his workplace because he was not dedicated yeah. but now it also looks bad it makes his family look at him <clears throat> differently because now you don't love me enough to go to work and provide for me yeah it looks bad on when you're trying to get another job as well it looks bad on your work history yeah. exactly because you wasn't dedicated dedication goes so many ways it goes so many uh different ways we need to make sure that we show dedication in, in everything that we do you know we've talked about this in our past episodes before and that is the, the one thing that you kind of uh uh me and you have kind of talked about and that is that the physical yeah shadows the shadows spirit. the spiritual yeah or and, and vice versa the spiritual also will shadow the spiritual the, yeah. the, the, the physical so it, they go it's hand in hand mirror. so so we, and that that's exactly the mirror they mirror each other and so if your physical is not dedicated if your physical is not sold out really in the long run that's that's what being dedicated means it means i'm sold out to what i believe it means i'm sold out to the cause of what i believe um that no no matter what may come my way yeah no matter what i may go through i may fail i you know uh let, let's just be 100 percent transparent Okay, this is this is still coffee bar confessions. Okay, and this is where our our, our new way of doing things is, is where Matt and Timmy now confesses. Okay, now now our listeners are going to hear some things about Matt and Timmy. Okay, Matt and Timmy did not want to start a podcast because of why? Because of fear of failure. Yeah, we knew that that there are people out there our, our our number one statement that we bring up to each other is, is there's there's another one of us out there yeah that that's what we every time we we step foot on the the at the coffee bar studio we know that this is not about us yeah, it's about the purpose but before we started this we knew that matt and timmy's gonna fail yeah you know it's hard sometimes to completely dedicate ourselves to coffee bar because we know that we are 100% flesh and we're going to fail. That's one yeah. thing that's good about this podcast, though, is this is a place where it's okay to fail. Yeah. It, you fail and you confess. Yeah. <laughs> good so, content. <laughs> yeah. So it's a, it's a point that if they, if they, if we get on here and we are 100% transparent, okay, and we let other people know that living for God it's not all about being perfect. No. Okay? Living for God uh, is about getting knocked down. Because people think, well, now that I've started living for God, everything's going to be perfect. No. Yeah. That's people not, are going to test you in your walk with God. Yeah, that, yeah, that's not the way that, you know, just because I'm living for God doesn't mean that everything's going to be rosy and I'm just going to, you know, everything's just going to go my way and I'm going to get... Uh, jobs and, and, and money and, you know, my bills are always going to be paid and, you know, we're going to be eating steak now instead of bologna sandwiches and, you know, nothing wrong with bologna sandwiches because I love bologna sandwiches, but it, I'm just, it's to the point that no matter what, I'm sold out to what I believe. Uh, and, you know, and that's the thing. If when given a Bible study, when given a Bible study, uh, I, I talked about this in our Kingdom Builders class uh, here a while back. When given a Bible study, if you don't, if you cannot take your topic and teach it to a five-year-old, and that five-year-old understand exactly what you're talking about, then you're not truly dedicated. You're not sold out. You don't truly believe what you're teaching. Yeah. And so if I'm teaching oneness or if I am, am trying to tie in the plan of salvation or if I'm trying to tie in, you know, 
the love of God. And if I can't teach that to a five-year-old, I have no business teaching it to nobody else until I first get the revelation of what I'm talking about. Yeah. And when I get that revelation, you'll, you'll know I got the revelation because anybody who has the revelation of Jesus is not going to have any problem yeah. dedicating. It's like Paul talking to King Agrippa. You know, he said, I myself was almost convinced, you know. Yeah, exactly. Almost. Yeah. You know, almost. <clears throat> and so at, at that point, when we go throughout our day, throughout our life, I promise you our dedication to our wives, to our children, to our pastors, to our churches, to ourselves, to God, to those who love us, to the community, to the community, all of these things. They're, our dedication to this is going to be tested. Yeah, going above and beyond. And that's when we have to. You're exactly right. Uh, when we go above and beyond for each and every one of those things, when we realize that my dedication to my family it matters, my dedication to my church it matters. My dedication to God, it absolutely matters. When I get my dedication to God, all those other things are going to fall in place. You know, when you're de truly dedicated to God and, and in prayer and in fasting like you're supposed to be, then it's not going to be hard to be dedicated to your children. It, yeah. I promise you, it won't be hard to get up and go to work. Now your flesh, it's going to want to sl sleep in. Yeah. Your, your flesh is going to want to snooze the alarm, you know, but eventually you're going to say, I've got kids, I've got family, I've got a wife, I've got, I've got obligations. Yeah, when God's pulling you out of sleep to pray for someone. Yeah. Yeah, I've got obligations to get up and pray. And so, once again, going, going back to um, the soldier thing before we, before we move on to the spiritual part of things. Uh, if you was in a platoon, if you was in a platoon and you was in your barracks and we was sleeping and you know I've, I've only heard stories I don't I, I've never been in the military I don't know how things work in the military but I've heard stories about every morning at like well like three four o'clock in the morning they'll come in there and kick a metal trash can and wakes everybody up and everybody has to jump up out of bed and and throw your stuff on and they take them off running Okay, that's the only stories I've heard. You know, maybe maybe some of our military watchers can can give us some uh, you know advice on how that works. But yeah. but if you was in a platoon and you got up every morning at four o'clock, trash can kicked across, uh, and you're you get up, you get your clothes on, and you're ready. But you see me laying over there in the bed still asleep. Is that going to make you feel like I'm truly sold out to the point that when we go into battle, you're going to want me yeah. linked arms? You're going to lose confidence. Yeah, you're going to yeah. lose confidence. Um, and and here's the, here's the thing. There might it, there might be a reason. Myself, uh, I've I've dealt with sleep apnea. You know, to the point that. Uh, my wife says that I completely quit breathing a lot. Uh, I've, whenever I went and had my sleep test, they told me that I quit breathing 76 times a minute. You know, and I, I asked the doctor, how in the world can that even happen? You know, like 76 times a minute, that means I, I, there ain't Can't one breathe. second. <laughs> there ain't one second in that, se in that minute that I'm breathing. You know, and so, you know, but... That makes it to the point to where sometimes it's hard. I, I'm not a morning person for that reason because I don't sleep throughout the night real good. So there might be a cause or a reason why somebody might not be able to jump up at 4 o'clock in the morning, but military is probably not your yeah. cup of tea then. You know, same, same thing with my father was, in, was a, in the fire department for almost 30 years, or may, may have been 30 years, but it was right around that area. I promise if your house burnt down, you wouldn't want a fireman that that can't get up. You know, no. at, at 1, 2 o'clock in the morning when that alarm goes off, 
that, that, that guy has to be able to jump out of bed, get his bunker gear on, jump in that, and you know, you gotta be, you got to know that when that guy shows up that he's not a walking zombie over there holding the water hose. You know, he, but he's, he's able to jump up, put his sleep aside because he cares enough about your yeah. home that he's, he's gonna do everything that he can to make sure that you don't lose it. So yeah. with that being said, just because you're struggling, just because you're going through an issue, just because you know firemen can't get a, can't wake up out of bed, or a military guy can't just jump up at the kick of a can, okay? Just because you're struggling, that does not mean that you're failing. No. Okay. There, there's underlining issues, but that doesn't mean that that just because I'm struggling, just because uh, you know, transferring into the the spiritual transformation part of things. Just because I struggle and in, in, in a little bit in my fasting, does that mean that God has just kicked me plumb out of the 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 spiritual platoon and, and I am completely done and I might as well give up with life because God has God hates me? No. If I if I have set out on a on a journey, I'm gonna pray every day at eight o'clock. Every day. To the point that I've got an alarm on my phone that, that's going to come off every day at 8 o'clock. Time to pray. If I look at that alarm and I say, okay, it's time to pray. And I pray. I, and I do good for six, seven, eight days. And I mean, I'm faithful every day praying. And I, 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 you know, I'm speaking in tongues. I'm, I'm getting into the Spirit. I'm doing everything that I need to do. And on that eighth day, Life hits. Yeah, you're still at the store. Still, yeah, stuck at the store at eight o'clock. Uh, you know, something's going on to the point that I'll do it when I get home. Yeah. Does that mean that you have now broke that dedication? You know, on your eighth day, you didn't pray, so we just quit. Mm -hmm. We just quit. We just quit praying. We'll quit fasting. We'll quit reading our word. Because we think that God hates us so bad because we broke that dedication that he no longer wants anything to do with us. That's the way we feel. Why? Because somewhere along the line, we wasn't faithful to somebody else. We broke a, a like, you know, like I said in past episodes, we broke our... You know, the best thing that a man can give is his word. Okay? And so you tell somebody, hey, I'll be at your house at 9 o'clock. Yeah. Okay. They'll be waiting on you. They're sitting there on the porch waiting on you. Um, tire goes flat. Water goes up. You know, water turns off. You can't take a shower now. Uh, you know, you get up. The power's off. You know, whatever. Alarm, you know, alarm didn't go off yeah, because the power's off. Didn't no groceries in the cabinet. Yeah. And so, and you're and you're at that point of something went wrong, and it was, and it was beyond your ability. Okay, it was beyond your ability. But that person show you, you show up at that person's house a little late, and you say, "I'm sorry," and they say, well, "I've been sitting there waiting on you for 45 minutes." Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I you know, had this happen, had that happen, you know, and you automatically can tell when you show up at that person's house that they have something against the fact that you were late. And so it automatically puts that wedge in between y'all's spirits. And now you're feeling like, well, they're mad at me now. Yeah. So, we, block. so because that's the way we feel, that's the way we look at life, when God, when, yeah. instead of just saying, okay, I made a mistake. God, please forgive me. I'm ready to move on with day nine. You yeah. know, I broke eight. But day nine can start a whole new process. Okay? I missed one day. I'm sorry for that. But let's be dedicated from here on out. Because God's not mad at you. God wants you to make it up. Yeah, well, God's not felt, mad at you. He just, want, he just wants you to keep going. He just wants you to keep moving. Don't, don't fall back. Yeah. Because, like I said, just because you're struggling don't mean that you're failing. Yeah. The only way that you can fail, the only way that you can fail is if you decide to stop trying. Yeah, it's not worth it. Then you fail. Then you go back into 
Just yeah. sin. Yeah, you go. Then you go back into sin. So, uh, so I mean, and that that's I, I didn't even realize that was your next thought there uh, about about failing and the, the, the decisions that we make. So, the first time that we fail, what decisions do we make? Yeah, it's only natural for us when we fail at something. When we fall short, we just want to lower that shield of faith yeah. and and that exposes us up to the the enemy spiritually yeah. and and we're getting hit with those fiery darts of thoughts of well they don't like me anymore they're mad at me yeah. i'm never going to succeed at this exactly yeah. so we have a decision when we're getting those darts at us when we're having those thoughts so you got to stop and realize those aren't my thoughts we got to pick that shield back up you know, we have the helmet of salvation on. We know what it takes to be saved. We know yeah. what it takes to make it inside, deep inside. But instead of listening to to uh, our right mind, you know, instead of listening to that, that Holy Ghost that's yeah. in you, you know, we want to feel that weight of that shield. It's like it's it's too hard. It's too heavy. Is it worth picking back up? And that and that's the thing. Not, not to say that, that, that in the middle of the battlefield that that, shield is not going to become heavy because you can ask any military those ruck packs that they carry on their backs oh, yeah. and they're heavy yeah. you know uh, and even down to you know the the armor that that we're talking about like a, a knight would wear or or something like that back in the older days that stuff was not light yeah, you know and so when they go to pick up that shield I'm sure after hours of being in a battle, I'm sure after hours of, of, of fighting and swinging that, that sword and, and holding that shield to protect and all that yeah. kind of thing. And then getting hit it. time after yeah. time with arrows and swords. Yeah, and it, and it just keeps, mm -hmm. you know, going like that. So I'm sure that it gets heavy. So I'm not, not to downgrade the fact that you're going to go through something. Not to downgrade the fact that in the middle of the battle, in the middle of the struggle, that you're going to feel weak, okay? But no matter how many times, no matter how many times that you have, that you get hit, that you get to the point of um, struggling, you know, a lot of people can't get over the fact that over and over and over again, you get hit. Yeah. And it's hard. And it's a struggle, everyday life, you know. But at this point, let's talk about your your two thoughts right there. Going go to them real quick. The first time you fell, you got a decision to make. Yeah. Do we give up? Do yeah. we? Some people do, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And we give up because we lose focus on, is it worth the fight? Is it worth the, the process of getting back up? And is the cause great enough? Do I really see in the future what's, what it's going to benefit me? Or do we keep going? Do we see that worth? Do we yeah. see that prize, you know, when we're in that battle? It's it's easy to feel the hits against your shield and the weight of it and a battle that never ends because it's a daily fight. From the moment you wake up to the time you go to sleep, you're battling it spiritually. And it could be easy just to let that shield fall and to succumb to the war. Yeah. But we, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, you know, as the word says. And uh, the devil's never gonna stop fighting us. Anytime we trip up, anytime we fall, the devil's just going to make it that much wor worse on us. So what's important is to know that to be a good cheer, you know, for he has overcome the world because he has the victory. He's already beat it. He's already succeeded in that, in that battle. And we're just sitting here thinking that it's our fight. Yep. When truly he's already won this whole fight altogether. That's like what the, what's the, the old little kid song say? The battle's not mine, says little David. <laughs> you know, so it's to the point that 
it's time that we show up. We show up to the battle. You know, despite what we went through, despite the fact that we're uh, we're struggling, despite that yesterday we battled the same battle and we haven't got over it yet, despite that you may, you know, one of the biggest things that we deal with nowadays, you might show up to church or you might show up to a to a function and, and somebody be in their carnal and they smart off to you or, or they, they, the biggest thing is they say something to your children or, you know, they say something to, to just cringe you to the point that now you're mad. Yeah. You know, and... Uh, you get to, you get to that point that I thought I was over that. I thought I was I, I thought I had already gotten past that point, uh, and it it makes you feel like that you are worthless. Like you're to that point that when God looks at you, He says, and you know, and we we get these thoughts and these mentality this mentality of this is how God wants us to be. And so it, it makes it to the point that when we fail or when we think, okay, well, I've gotten rid of that. I'm, I'm, I no longer have that in my life. Um, I, I'm not going to get mad over that no more. I've already given it. I just talked to uh, a man in our church just yesterday. And he said, I don't know what happened. He said, but I woke up. He said, out of a dream. He said, and I had, I had forgiven these people. He said, brother, man, I had forgiven these people years ago. He said, and I woke up to the point that I was so mad. He said, because in this dream, me and this person got in a fight. And he said, and I had had forgiven that a long time ago. He said, that that, that, that wasn't even in my mind. He said, and I don't understand. He said, because I I thought I was over it. Yeah. You know, and I I just told him, I said, bro, I I said, it could be a situation where God was saying, did you really get over it? Mm-hmm. Or it could be a situation that God was was using that to say, hey, he's already over. Don't worry about it. Because he woke up and he wasn't mad at the person. He said, "He said I literally looked to God and said, God, I thought I'd already given that to you. You know? And he, so it's, it's to the point that we feel like sometimes that God is mad at us because I thought I'd already gotten rid of that, God. You know? And, and so now... If I can look past my flesh and say, maybe I haven't gotten rid of it. You know, maybe maybe it's just now coming to the surface again. Maybe I just brung it down just a little little underneath the skin to where I couldn't see it. You know, and I and I thought that I had gotten rid of it. But now that it's came back and I faced it again, you know, how dedicated am I gonna be? Do I, do I say, God, you're done with me because I allowed my flesh to, to rear back up again? You know, or, or do I say, God, I'm, 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 I am flesh and I don't want to be this way. Please forgive me and please take this from me. So mm-hmm. it becomes, what are you going to dedicate yourself to? Are you going to dedicate yourself to God or are you going to dedicate yourself to your flesh? Which one's more important? Yeah. You know, uh, because me, myself, I have an issue. Confess. I have an issue. It's hard for me to pray when I'm mad. When I get mad, I, I know so many people, they can get mad and they can just go to their little room and they can just pray and they can shed a few tears and they can come back and they can say, I'm sorry, and everything is all hunky-dory. Yeah, you do exactly the opposite of what the, spilling, the Spirit's telling you yeah. to do. And with me, my flesh is, is, is so out of control sometimes that whenever I get mad, I have tried to go back into my, my room and pray. And I go in there and I sit down and I pray and I literally speak the honest to God, truth to God. And I tell him, say, God, I want to be mad right now. So I'm dedicating myself to my flesh at that point because my flesh wants to be bad, mad, but my spirit knows I need to give this up. Yeah. But my flesh is winning the battle. It takes true dedication to get up every day and to die out to your flesh. Exactly. As Apostle Paul says, I die daily. Exactly. So, uh, in, in a spirit, like I said, in the spiritual side of things, we can't give up. We can't. We have to keep going. In the spiritual side of things, you're going 
to fight battles. Yeah. You're going to be on the battleship and feel uh, not the the battlefield and feel weary. Okay, it, it's going to get to the point of being so heavy sometimes that that it makes it so hard to pick up your your gear, to pick up your your life, to pick up your word of God, and to continue to move. But at that point, at that point, you uh, figure out that when I when I say that I'm spiritually going to keep moving. I'm spiritually going to stay focused and I'm spiritually, I'm going to make it. Mm-hmm. And there's only, there's one way, one reason I'm going to make it is because I'm dedicated. Yeah. I'm dedicated. So at, at the end of the end of the day, when we dedicate ourselves, we're saying, I'm going to give everything that I have in all of my efforts. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna read my word, even if I forget today. You know, uh, the Bible that we read the, on the, our phones, we have the ability to do devotions together. Yeah. And was it just uh, yesterday? I think it was that in our devotion that me, you, and Sister Alice are doing, she puts on there, "Hey, you guys are slacking a little bit," you know, and that helps us to be accountable. Yeah. I went right then and there, and I, I did finish mine off. I did too. <laughs> so, you know, it helps us to be accountable. It makes us to gets us to the point that I realized I was not doing everything in all of my efforts, and so I did. I went and finished it off right then and there. Uh, but going back to the to the definition, to the quality of being dedicated or committed to a task or a purpose, that lets us know that we all have a task or a purpose in front of us. Yeah. So <laughs> if I'm going to give everything to my task, I'm going to be this person that's going to make sure that at the end of the day. Have you gave your hundred percent? At the end of the day, can you know? It, you may you know. I was always told this. I played sports my whole life since I was five years old, and I was always told by a lot of my coaches, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that you win or lose. It doesn't matter that you win or lose. What matters is, is that you gave your 100%. What matters is, is at the end of the day, can you say that you was truly dedicated to your team enough that you gave everything that you had? The, your blood, sweat, and tears. Okay, and so it's important to know that set, setbacks are gonna occur. Yeah. It's important to know that in your reading the word that, that, that setbacks are going to occur. You know, you're not going to completely want to read the word every day to the point that you can completely give everything else up and read. You're not going to get to that point of I'm, I'm just so perfect that I'm going to fast every day, 23 yeah. hours a day, and eat one, Yeah. you know, because I'm holy. No, that's not the way it is. Your flesh is going to rear up on certain things. So it's important to know that setbacks are going to happen. People are going to make you mad. Although you give that to God, and God, my anger, I'm giving it to you, people are going to make you mad. Yeah, you got to be flexible. Yeah. And uh, find a deeper reason. Right. That why. Yeah. Why do I do this? It's not, it's not for yourself. Yeah. It's, it's it's for uh, the kingdom. It's for the ultimate purpose is the kingdom anyway. Exactly. But but when setbacks occur, when things happen, if you're not dedicated, if you're not 100% dedicated to the purpose, you're not going to step up and do what's needed. You're not going to step up. You're going to actually. You're going to find yourself more disappointed in your in your walk with God. More disappointed in your ability as husbands to lead our families. You're going to find yourself disappointed constantly. You know. And so when you do that, nine times out of ten, when you find yourself disappointed, a disappointed person is much easier to quit. Mm-hmm. So if you're disappointed in your reading, if you're disappointed in your being a husband, if you're disappointed in, 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 in any, any task that was set before you, 
if you're not dedicated to it and you have your setbacks, there's only one, other, one way to go, and that's to quit. Yeah, because it's not in your heart. Because it's not in your heart. But when you're 100% dedicated to it, I promise you, no matter, the, no matter the fault, no matter the problem, no matter the struggle, you're going to come out on top. Yeah. Because you're going to say, God, I, I realize that I'm, that I'm not 100% doing everything right, but I'm, but I'm dedicated. Yeah. All right. So hopefully you got something out of this episode about being dedicated. Uh, Brother Timmy and I, we are speaking this from experience. We are speaking this from the point that if we don't dedicate ourselves, drummer of the church, guitar of the church, guitar player of the church, ministry of the church, Bible studies, different things that we do. We, if we don't dedicate ourselves to the task set before us, then we're not going to make it. And so we want you to understand that being dedicated is one of the keys to making heaven. Being dedicated is one of the keys that a Christian has to have in order to make it right with God. So if we could, let's just bow our heads. We want to pray that you get dedicated in 2023. We want to pray that that throughout this time that we're that we're going through uh, every episode of Coffee Bar Confessions that you can remember the episode to where Coffee Bar Confessions told you that you have to be dedicated to God. So let's just bow our heads and pray. Dear Father, we come before you right now. God, we ask you, God, to put dedication in our hearts, God, to allow us, God, to dedicate ourselves fully to your work, fully to your pr to praying to you, God, and to reading your word. God, help us, God, to give ourselves, God, in everything that we have, God, in all efforts, God, that we have, to dedicate ourselves to you, God. God, we know, God, that things are going to come, God. Setbacks are going to occur. Weaknesses are going to be there, God. They're going to be present, God, in our lives, God. God, we realize that our flesh is going to rear up, God. God, but we know, God, that within you, God, that we can do all things, God. God, and we can make it happen, God, in, the, in our lives. God, we ask you, Lord Jesus, right now that you would touch every listener, God. God, and you help them, God, to be dedicated to the work, dedicated to the task, and dedicated, God, to what you have for them, God. God, we ask you, God, to birth, God, ministries, God, out of this dedication. Birth ministries, God, God, out, out of their commitments, God, that they have to you, Lord. God, we ask you to move, God, on their life, God, right now. God, we ask you to touch every church member that goes to Truth Apostolic Church and help them, God, God, to be examples, God, of this dedication, God. God, we love you and we praise you, God, and we magnify your name today, God. And we give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name, we thank you. We opened up 2023, and now we're, we're on a journey of dedication. I want to be different. I want to be changed. Don't want to be the same Matt. I want to be different in my ministry. I want to be different in coffee bar. And dedication is what's going to, what's going to bring that out. So we want to thank you guys for coming and being a part of us on Coffee Bar Confession. Thanks for taking the time to take in today's program. This is a media ministry outreach of Truth Apostolic Church in Madisonville, Kentucky. For more information about our ministry, visit our website, 